Hello beloved soul and welcome to the Spiritual Support Crew, the podcast dedicated to supporting all lightworkers, starseeds, psychics, healers and all helper souls incarnated on earth in these interesting times. I'm your host Helen Crosby and I was going to talk about the subject of resilience today because that's very much a buzzword right now, especially among small businesses since here in the UK many people are being adversely affected by the second national lockdown. And by the way, I'm hosting weekly small business follow back Friday events on my Instagram, so do feel free to jump in on one of those if that helps your business to grow right now. I'll pop the link down in the show notes. But my plans to talk about resilience were scuppered when my guides made it obvious to me that that particular topic will have to wait for another day. We will get to it, but first we have something else more important to address. A very basic truth that affects us all, but that as a human race we desperately need to remember. And that is oneness. This concept that we are all one, or somehow linked, connected, it's not a new one. It's actually quite popular in the New Age movement. But as I watch world events unfolding around me at the moment, particularly in the US elections and the growing divides in the general population on topics like lockdowns, masks, viruses and other subjects that the media is determined to generate as much fear and confusion about as they can, I'm witnessing ever-increasing divides between people who are falling into smaller and smaller opinion groups. I can see that the message that ultimately we are all one is needed now more than ever before. Now, divide and rule is one of the oldest tricks in the book for the few to gain and retain power over the many. And we desperately need for humanity to not only realise what's happening and refuse to be divided in such a way and realise that each of us has more common in common with our neighbour than not, but we need to take this a step further and remember the higher spiritual truth that we are actually all one. Not just connected, but one. What happens to the least of us affects us all. I was reminded about this during a powerful spiritual experience I had earlier this year. I experienced a profound remembering on a deep spiritual level that we really and truly are all one and it was amazing. I spent time looking at people around me and seeing so clearly that we really are all one. It made me laugh and cry at the same time because I was so grateful and so happy to have finally got some of my spiritual connection back with the divine on such a deep level. It felt wonderful to truly remember and know and feel the connection with all other beings and with higher consciousness. I found myself floating on waves of higher energies for days and everything became very clear to me. Whilst some of the feelings may have been fleeting and probably for the best, as I have no idea how I would function like that in the real world if I was in such a state of constant spiritual bliss and enlightenment, would I remember to eat? I don't know. It was such a strange but wonderful place to exist in for the time that I was there. But for whatever reason, I didn't get to stay in that blissful state but I do still have the memories of that feeling of complete and perfect oneness with everyone and everything, and that has been indelibly burned into my psyche. I've heard about people who have had near-death experiences talking along the same lines, and whilst my life wasn't in any danger, thankfully, I was, for whatever reason, gifted with a glimpse of some universal truths. And it really was a wonderful gift. I can't get over how wonderful and how complete I felt during those days or how clear everything seemed to me and I wanted to stay in that place forever. What I understood is that oneness is our true nature. We are all one, literally all of us, even the people you don't like or don't agree with. 
It's quite hard to explain because it's the experiential knowing rather than the intellectual one that makes the biggest difference. To paraphrase the words of one Buddhist monk, before I had that experience, I understood the words we are one, but not their true meaning. So I'm going to try to explain this as best I can, because until humanity really grasps this, we will continue to be stuck in the current paradigm of duality that makes us endlessly fight, squabble and war amongst ourselves to little or no avail and to much harm to all of us. So the basic concept here is just that, we are all one. Now, it sounds strange if you've never come across this theory before, but ultimately that's the truth. I also appreciate that I'm starting to sound like a stock record here, but there really isn't any better way to describe it. We may look as though we're separate and discrete beings, but that is just the perception we've been given in order to experience this lifetime in this realm. The Earth in its current form, and at this dimensional level, is one of duality, one of opposites, heat and cold, up and down, good and bad, love and fear, and this reality allows our souls to experience these as different things. But if you think about it, even things which appear to be opposite to one another can't really be separated. Let's take heat and cold, for example. They appear to be opposites, but just where does heat start and cold end? At what temperature does cold stop and heat begin? Or are they just the same thing expressed differently in a linear matter manner, which is how we can look at them in this reality? Looking at human beings, We know that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, right? That we all have souls or a higher self and that we are connected to the source of all things or God, if you want to call it that. We also know that the source of all things is pure love, consciousness and oneness. The deception that's been played on us in this lifetime is to believe that we are separate from this source, separate from God. Some higher aspect of ourselves decided that we would come to this plane with amnesia, completely forgetting the higher truths of the universe, and that we would live believing that we were unique and individual beings, separate from everyone and everything else. And whilst this certainly is a deception, it is one that has great purpose, and we are not here in this lifetime purely by chance or because we're somehow being punished or made to suffer. We are here to experience that feeling of separation and all the suffering, wars, fighting and struggle that comes from that mistaken belief. But the world has reached a point now when we are due to remember the truth about who we really are and ascend to the next plane of existence, whatever that will look like. Some of us are remembering this, but most aren't there yet. It's a natural part of our evolution And it will happen to all of us eventually. But the sooner we wake up to this fact and choose to believe it, even in the absence of any evidence to confirm it, the sooner we will see suffering start to disappear from the planet. After all, if we remember and know that we are all one, why would we ever kill another person? Why would we harm anyone? Why would you leave people in another country or area to starve or suffer after a natural disaster? Well, you wouldn't if we all knew and truly appreciated that there is no separation, that what happens to that other person is not separate from us, even if we can't feel it. What affects one affects all. When one suffers, we all suffer on some level. The problem is we've grown so accustomed to suffering and struggle that we hardly notice it anymore. It's become normalised to the point where we expect it and just continue to manifest it. But what would happen if we chose to believe that we are one? Chose to believe that our actions and inactions would affect every other being? I can only imagine what that would look like, but the world would certainly be a very different place. This sort of thinking requires a great level of personal responsibility that many people just aren't ready for right now, 
but many are. For centuries now, most of us have, have abdicated our personal responsibilities to other people that we call leaders or kings or politicians. But why? Why would any one person think that another person was more suitable to make their decisions for everybody rather than each person making adult and self-aware decisions for themselves? If you're anything like me, you probably grew up believing that these people were somehow better, of higher moral standing or wiser than the average person. But in my experience, the reverse tends to be true. Moreover, these sorts of roles have been shown to attract a disproportionate amount of people with most unsavoury characters who certainly don't have anyone else's best interests at heart. And relying on bloodlines to rule you based on some myth of royalty? That seems even more ludicrous when you stop to think about it rationally. These people are no lesser or greater than any one of us, because we are all one with the divine. Some of us are acting out some interesting stories and characters in this lifetime, that's for sure, and some of them are nicer than others, but that is all they are, a fiction. We are all one, not just with each other, but with the higher realms, with the spirit realms, with the angelic realms, and with that which some people call God. There is no separation, and there never was. It just looks that way for a while, until we choose not to play this game anymore. If you imagine that God, or the divine, is a beam of white light, and that that light is hitting a beautiful, many-faceted crystal prism, and the light is being cast into billions of different coloured beams in infinite different directions, each one of us is one of those beams of beautifully coloured light. We look different, sound different and identify as different beings, but we're just a focused aspect of that heavenly white light. Take away the crystal, which might represent the illusion of this world, and we go back to being that original beam of white light. We go back to being God. When we remember that we are all one, being kind, compassionate and loving to other people comes naturally. Until then, we can try to remind ourselves of that fact and embody the behaviours, even if we haven't had the oneness experience yet. We can understand the words and live the principles, even if we have not fully experienced their meaning yet. It occurs to me that the way we help to manifest the new earth, the way we manifest our new wisdom and enlightenment, is to perhaps act as if it were already so. And by that, I mean to have such faith in the words that we believe, that we act as though we were all one, even though we may not fully feel it or understand it yet. Now, I don't know that for sure, but my work with the law of attraction would certainly suggest that it could be so. And ultimately, what do we have to lose by living in such a way now? Living as if we already know on every level that we're all one. Showing kindness, compassion, grace to other people like we never have before. I can only think that doing so, in and of itself, will bring great positive change in a way that selfishness, judgment and meanness of spirit never could. You can't fight your way to peace. You're travelling in the wrong direction. Being human isn't easy. We are imperfect beings with confusing emotions, with minds and egos that most of us were never taught how to control or use properly. What I do know is that each one of us has unlimited potential and that we are powerful manifestors that can co-create our future so we must have control over how fast we, ha we choose to evolve. So let us choose to embody true oneness, to reject separation or labels. Let's stop forcing other people with differing views into groups and identifying ourselves by our petty differences of belief or thought. 
We are so much bigger than that because we are, each of us, one with all that has ever been and all that can ever be. We are truly one. And it's time to remember that now. <laughs>